Live bait and slow pitch rigs for some black sea bass madness. Stay tuned. Well, folks, it's early June. It's a bluebird day in New Jersey, early June. Uh, we're coming out of the, uh, the uh, channel here, and it's a nostalgic view because the Barnegat Lighthouse is under construction, not construction, but refurbishing. It's a beautiful site. Looks like a hotel right now, but I'll tell you what, we had an epic day on the water, and our goal today was slow pitch versus bait, which worked best, and what made the day was the decision. We thought about going out for striper, then heading out, but we focused on sea bass and just had the best day of fishing we've had in a long while. So here we are, Captain Dan, 30 seconds down, banged his first fish on slow pitch. Jack and I were on bait. We're going to share the results with you later, but boy, epic. Slow pitch, baby. That's the way to do it. So to start the day, I was on a strictly slow pitch. Mike and Jack were still on bait, and every drop I got a fish. Here's Mike on bait. We were using clams, about six ounces of weight. Jack on, on bait as well, clams, high-low rig, six ounces of weight. Slow pitch is doing great. Slow it's out pitch. fishing the bait, that's for sure. It, it definitely is. I mean, as soon as it gets down there, it gets hammered. This is small throwback. So folks, we were fishing about seven miles offshore at Barnegat Inlet on a wreck and we were sharing a spot with a couple other boats and they were anchored or spot locked they were producing nothing again the slow pitch was one after another every drop of fish that slow pitch is way out fishing the bait like not even close you get hammered every time you go down anyways Ben and your rod pretty good yeah well that's the slow pitch is killing us oh this is a nice one Ready? Nice. Oh, 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 nice. Slow pitch is unbelievable. We're out fishing bait, what, six to one? Easy, six to one. So it didn't take long for Mike to switch to slow pitch. For you guys that don't think slow pitching works up north, six to one versus bait. So I gotta tell you, all in all, we, we killed them on slow pitch way above, the number kept ratio kept going up from slow pitch to bait to the point where I switched to slow pitch and it was just a slam fest couldn't couldn't be happier so Jack stayed on bait we outfished him to the end of the day part of 41 so we're using Ocean Tackle slow pitch rig paired up with a uh, Metallica reel set up for this rod. I'll show you the bait we're using in a second. Tell you a 30 gram imitates a sand eel, silver with the glow. This has got three assist hooks, which I prefer just to have maybe one or two. But we're trying to rig up quick, get them down there quick because we're on the fish. Ooh, oh, nice fish, nice fish, yeah. Take that all day long. That's a nice I mean, we have to be out fishing bait 12 to 1 now. <sighs> Look, folks. You, know, you don't think slow pitching works for it? Like, what, 30 to 1? And catching big ones on slow pitch. So key thing for slow pitch are conditions. You can see here the water's flat. Our um, line is going straight down, not too much scope. In, in instances where it is, it's gonna be tough to do that. So we're using about 40 pound braid and we took it down to 20 pound leader to cut through the water and keep it deep at about 77 feet. Here you can see Mike open up the fish box. At this point, we've got about 10 really nice keepers. You want Jack? How's he feel? Decent. It's a beautiful day. Beginning of June. Double. We got a double. Doubled up again. He's a throwback. Jax was a throwback? Yeah. 
He hit on the way down. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah throwback. So at this point, Jack gives up on bait, completely goes to slow pitch, and starts scoring with uh, myself and his father, Chef Mike. Um, he's using the same outfits we are. Uh, lots, lots of shorts mixed in, but still good. You can see the pumping technique we're using. It's not a fast pump. It's a moderate speed. Um, Jack's got the form right there. My line's going down. As soon as it goes down, usually we're getting a hit. Otherwise, we start to pump, and the fish we're hitting on the down. So the experiment today was bait versus slow pitch for black sea bass. <laughs> and we had a slam. Dan Danny, why don't you elaborate on well, the ratio we between... <laughs> with, I, I don't know. You knew the ratios. It's like 10 to 1. Oh, no. It's, more, it's like four, at this point now, we're like at 40 to 1 on bait. Yeah. In bait fact, was not doing anything. Fishing. And slow pitch was just killing it. And just, just grab that one. Yeah. Bait. Uh, so we took our ocean tackle not the uh, not the elevate rods and we're using this small pattern right here you get that Jack yeah perfect and we're gonna switch it up now that the tides changing yeah tried, I think so. tried a couple different uh, lures but I mean it was uh, you couldn't you, as soon as you reached the bottom or on the way down you had one on uh, the trick is you don't set the hook the fish we lost we the trick is go to slow pitch and there thanks to Johnny Jigs for turning us on yeah. if it wasn't for his YouTube channel I'd never know about it so. The boys at Johnny's, you're the best. All right, we're going to wait for the tide to switch, and we're going to get back at it. So back at the dock, it was an epic day. We kept 16, could have kept more, probably boated easily 150 fish plus. Uh, flayed them off. They're, they're not real hard to flay if you know how to do it. I think we showed that in a previous episode. Please, if you haven't seen it, tune in. But I have to tell you, man, they are the most beautiful fish. Absolutely tasty. They always have a crabby lobster note to them. And it, the recipe we're going to show you in a little bit is the perfect, simple recipe for your table. Hi, folks. It's Chef Mike. So as they say, to the victor goes the spoils. We're going to take some of our beautiful black sea bass that we caught and create a very, very simple classical French dish, which is typically done with sole, called black sea bass Meunier. So it's quite simple. We're just gonna take, and this is this is l less than half the fish, probably a third of the fish that we caught yesterday, believe it or not, it's a three pound bag. Pretty awesome. So what we're gonna do is take the sea bass and we're gonna dredge it in this product. It's called Wondra. It's made by uh, gold metal. And it's a modified flour, modified food starch that typically is sold to thicken sauces. I would never use it for that. But I happened to learn a few years ago at a restaurant in New York City called Mama Fuko that if you saute fish with this, it gets really, really crisp. So we're going to take a little bit of olive oil. Now, if this was classic, if this was classic manure, we would use clarified butter. I don't want to make you guys do that. You know, at restaurants we have that at the ready. You're not going to have that at ready at home. So we're just going to start it with a little bit of olive oil. We're going to take some of our beautiful sea bass. And I'm telling you, they are beautiful. And we're just going to coat it in this Wondra. Okay. Nice and evenly. You don't even need egg. Just, just, the, just the Wondra. And this is a great trick. You're going to want to buy some of this and play with it because it's a pretty awesome trick. So all Meunier is, is fish cooked in butter with a little bit of fresh lemon juice and a little bit of parsley. Or you could use any other herb. Classically, it's parsley. And the butter turns brown because we talked about butter having milk solids in it and how it will burn. So that's kind of the idea, believe it or not. You're trying to burn it and create what's called bernoisette, or brown butter in French. So you just put that in there. Don't overload the pan, right? Put that to the side and just saute that for a little bit. So about, 
I don't know, two and a half minutes on each side, we're just gonna gingerly flip this fish. Look how beautiful it is, right? A little bit of black pepper, a little bit of sea salt, okay, just a little bit. And then we're gonna add whole butter. We're gonna probably two ounces of whole butter and let that melt, finish the cooking process, okay? And it will turn brown, it will, it will, it will start to burn, and that's called burn lozette, and it has an incredible nutty flavor to it. See how that starts to bubble? That's really critical, it starts to bubble, and that's where that milk solids separate from the butter fat and browns beautifully. Okay, so now this has been about another, uh, probably two and a half, three minutes. Now we're gonna remove our fish and we're gonna put it on our service platter. Look how flaky and beautiful that is. Oh my goodness. All right. And you see how that butter's starting to brown a little bit? I don't know if you can see that. And it's got that beautiful flavor of the fish in there. Fish is nice, gorgeous. Okay, now. We're just going to let this brown butter, or burn noisette, take a little bit more caramelization. Turn up the heat just a little bit. And then we're going to add some fresh lemon juice. So, a le lemon and a half of fresh lemon juice. That caramelization, or that sugar in that lemon, you see how quickly now that that browns because of that? And we're going to add a little bit of fresh parsley, which is classical for saumonier or anything manier. Cook that a couple seconds. Just to, I know this is probably the simplest recipe we're ever going to do on the show, but I'll tell you a quick story. We were in Amsterdam and we went to a restaurant which was famous for uh, being a, a, a windmill. And what we did was, there were 12 chefs. Their special for the night was saumonier. And all 12 chefs, independently of each other, ordered the salt. So it's 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 a classic, delicious recipe. So you see that butter's nice and brown, and we just ladle this on top. You see those little brown bits? Oh baby, oh baby, that is some goodness right there. And we just want to wipe our plate. And that is a classic manier sauce over our beautiful black sea bass that we caught yesterday. So as always, we're gonna bring the skipper in for a little taste and wine and see what he thinks. All right, Captain, come on in here for a taste. So what do you think? Simple? Looks, looks good. But elegant. Yep. So why don't we talk about the wine first, as always. Uh, our usual, our standard Albarinos Portuguese, actually Spanish wine uh, from the west coast of Spain. It's a very light and a uh, little bubbly white wine. Perfect, all right. First taste? Sure. Let's go. Mmm. It's really good. Right. So the, the lesson here is simple doesn't mean it's not simply tasting. It's 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 elegantly tasting. So let me make sure I might approve of my own work. Mmm. So flavorful. That that fresh black CBS is just absolutely incredible. Alright, so quick toast to one heck of a day on the water, catching them, slaying them. Or as Jack said, what did Jack say? Uh, slow pitch madness. Slow pitch madness on sea bass. So all you naysayers, I'll tell you what. So, I'll tell you what, practice catch and release or selective harvest. Stay safe out there. This has been Captain Dan and Chef Mike. We'll see you on the water soon. Cheers. Have a great summer.